what we'd like to know is why did you become a maternal fetal medicine specialist? What drove you to this career path? So I'd say overall, the field of OBGYN is really so unique. We have aspects of internal medicine, kind of just trying to decipher what's wrong, putting the puzzle pieces together. We've got aspects of radiology and imaging and surgery. And on top of that, to me, we have the opportunity to experience pure joy. Um, you know, when you, when you think about it, it's, you don't really know necessarily who remembered or who fixed your broken bone or took care of some medical issue. But being a part of the birth process is really memorable to a family. Um, and of course, there's sad times with OBGYN as well. Um, and the role that we play in those moments is perhaps even more important. Um, for me personally, I sought out OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine, also in part due to the aspect that I could make in research. Um, there's so many unanswered questions in our field and creating that data to better care for women and their families is incredibly rewarding. So that leads nicely into our next question about while you were at the National Institute of Child Health, you did help to launch the Human Placenta Project to study the placenta in real time. Why were you interested in studying the placenta in real time? So the placenta um, is something I've actually been studying since I was about 19. Um, and I didn't appreciate the, the, the the role of the placenta and what an incredible organ it is. It is the only organ that you can grow and discard and grow again and discard again and grow again. Um, it functions as so many different organs. It removes waste like the kidney and the liver. It produces hormones like the endocrine system. It provides oxygen like the lungs and nutrition like the, the gastrointestinal tract, right? Um, and when it forms Incorrectly, it's associated with adverse outcomes, such as fetal growth restriction or preeclampsia or preterm birth. But for the large part, for our studying it, it's been inaccessible. Um, we only can study it after delivery, and that doesn't give us understanding of how it changes across pregnancy. So given all of the advances in technologies, it seemed the right time to apply those non-invasive assessments to understand the structure, the function, and the development of the placenta with the goal to understand both normal and abnormal development, and hopefully then in the future be able to apply interventions when development is going abnormally in order to shift it more towards the normal. Because of course, optimal pregnancy outcome is a healthy baby and a healthy mom at term. And so a healthy placenta is really a key part of that equation. So let's talk about the pandemic a little bit. And as you wrote in your editorial for the February issue, of contemporary OBGYN, this pandemic has been something that you never expected to see in your lifetime. Yet you have managed through all the chaos and led others to be steadfast. What do you do to relax during times like these and keep yourself going? Big question. So the pandemic has certainly changed all of our lives. Um, in some ways, I think the isolation and the decrease in activities has really forced us all to be a little more introspective and attuned to our families and our relationships. And for us in obstetrics, there's really been no reprieve in clinical volume, just really added worry, especially in the beginning of transmission due to limited PPE and testing. And I think it's been a time for us all to really reflect on what's important and how to best achieve our best selves and to support others, celebrate their wins and really to empower others. Um, I also think it's really an important time for us to focus on our families and to allow those connections through virtual options for those who we can't travel to see. And I think we need to appreciate the impact that all of this is having on our children because I worry that at the moment we really underappreciate that. So you've been involved in one way or another with contemporary OBGYN over the years. Tell me about your interest in contemporary OBGYN and in now as your role as editor in chief. So contemporary OBGYN has had an incredible role for our specialty. It has been the go-to source for the practitioner to get clear, understandable, practical information for their patients. And, you know, I, through all of my training and residency fellowship, there's always been issues of contemporary OBGYN hanging around the, the call rooms or labor and delivery. And you just pick it up because it was so easy to, to read and such wonderful information in it. 
Um, it was, of course, founded by John Queenan, one of my mentors, and his vision was extraordinary to know what the practitioner needs to learn and how to present it in an easily digestible fashion. Um, his monthly editorials addressed a wide variety of topics that were always insightful and just key reads. Uh, Charlie Lockwood, another mentor of mine, then led that publication for two decades and continued that tradition of ensuring it was a must read. Um, it's been an honor for me to walk in the footsteps of my mentors and to continue this tradition. And I've been working with an incredible editorial board and staff. Um, and of course, we aim to continue the tradition as well as to evolve the publication to ensure that it meets the needs of all learners and practitioners.